Dr. Hill, it's Willie Geis. It's great to have you on the show this morning. Of all the stories and insights in the book, I'm perhaps most fascinated by your job as an NBC News stringer in 1988, which involved, I believe, <laughs> styling Tom Brokaw's hair on the roof of a hotel in Russia. I'm making coffee we'll for Maurice Shriver. Oh, my God. You did it all. <laughs> you did it all. Well, actually. <laughs> uh, uh, we can That's talk amazing. about dig into some detail on that perhaps another time. But I'm interested in your thoughts as someone on the inside who really knows better than anybody about this question that hovered over the Trump administration for four years, which was, what did Vladimir Putin have on Donald Trump that made him so deferential to Vladimir Putin, that made him never want to cross him publicly or even privately, to have Donald Trump so enthralled with Vladimir Putin? And you've said, really, there's nothing specific. There's no tape, not a real estate deal, but just the fragility of his ego. Could you flesh that out a little bit? And was there anything that Putin had on Donald Trump? Well, look, I think that's uppermost. It's the fragility of the ego. I mean, of course, we all know that um, President Trump wanted, as a businessman, and probably still does, to build a Trump Tower in Moscow and spent a lot of time uh, focused on that issue. And, of course, the Russians, as a matter of course, collect information on anyone who comes their way business person, politician, you know, any prominent uh, tourist. So you can be sure that they had something. But the biggest thing was the ability to manipulate, because what Vladimir Putin likes to do is find out what buttons he can post, you know, people's vulnerabilities. And that's what he honed into on, in the case of President Trump. We're looking at video as you speak, Dr. Hill, from Helsinki of President Trump and President Putin standing together. Our friend Jonathan Lemire asked point blank the question of Donald Trump. The world is watching right now. Will you criticize Vladimir Putin for interfering in the 2016 election? He infamously declined to do that. Um, what was your reaction to that moment in Helsinki? Well, I was actually sitting right in front of Jonathan and Jonathan features in the book because I recount this episode. And, um, you know, for me, of course, this was just um, a, a nightmare, well, for everybody else watching it as well, because it was entirely predictable. But from the perspective of myself and others who were working um, in the NSC at the time, we knew that President Trump did not want to admit that the um, Russians had played any kind of role in the election, because it would be tantamount to saying that he hadn't been elected legitimately, that he was an illegitimate president. He didn't want to give any credence, you know, to that kind of idea. And he also didn't want to challenge Putin. Because for Putin, Putin is for him the ultimate strongman. It's the person he wants to be most like. And he wanted Putin to like him. Yeah. The one question they actually asked me directly, in fact, the only real question I remember him asking me directly was, am I going to like him about Putin? Mm. You mentioned the idea of challenge.